Good, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pete DiStefano. Uh, I'm in the marketing organization from Piger Technologies. Uh, thank you for taking the time today. Today is the second in a series of four webinars on developing a mobile strategy. Today we're going to do a deep dive into um, building mobile and web applications that drive better executive decisions. Um, I thank you all for taking the time. Uh, I think we've got some valuable information to share with you, but I think the most valuable uh, parts of these webinars is interaction. So we really do encourage you to ask questions throughout, and at the end, we'll do our best to answer every single one of those questions. And uh, hopefully when you're done, you'll have a good sense on how to build a strategy to take advantage of analytics, whether it's on, on a web environment or in a mobile environment. I'm very excited because today uh, I have with us our Chief Technology Officer, George Cowgill. George, welcome. Thank you, Pete. I'm glad to be here. Uh, very excited that George is going to be presenting with us today as we go through our uh, topic area. Uh, this whole area around analytics, um, uh, Gus, there's been so much talk for years now about big data and taking advantage of all this information that companies have, regardless of whether you're a large company, mid-sized, or even small company, there's valuable information that can have, help you make better decisions. How, how does that manifest itself? And, and, and what are the outlets to get that information so you can make those better decisions? It's kind of what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna pass it over to George right off the bat and, and have him kind of kick off our presentation. So George, all you. All right, thanks, Pete. Yes, and, and uh, as far as, you know, helping organizations, uh, you know, make executives make better decisions, yes, certainly what we see is, that, you know, a short answer is that, you know, tools that provide uh, better visibility into the business and better performance and monitoring capability, alerts, this sort of thing, uh, they help drive, you know, data-driven decision-making. Uh, that, that's the short answer, answer in terms of how to make better uh, strategic decisions. We're going to walk through, uh, you know, some of the aspects of analytics in terms of what are the drivers for analytics today. Uh, and when we talk about this, we're, we're not necessarily going to, you know, lots of times when we start talking about analytics, it becomes a, quite an quite a in-depth discussion about big data and terabytes of data and petabytes of data and all types of data. We're, we're you know, lots of times with organizations, there are many practical things that can be done without creating massive in infrastructure that can improve the visibility uh, uh, into the, provide insight into the company's performance. Uh, so, so we're, but we're, what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, kind of talk about some of the drivers for analytics. Uh, at the same time, of course, we see this massive shift towards mobile. So we'll talk about that and what that means in terms of uh, business intelligence and analytics. Uh, we will also walk through and look at kind of the situation, you know, some situational analysis of what we see with various uh, medium-sized companies today not necessarily doing all the things that are hyped right now. And uh, we're, we're going to look at, you know, what can be done at uh, various uh, size companies. Uh, lastly, the thing that we're going to focus on is kind of a, a, a process and a roadmap on, on how to get started and how to get going and how to improve uh, analytics uh, in, in an enterprise. So when we, when we think about, you know, analytics, uh, you know, there's certainly, you know, uh, we, we can't ignore mobile and, uh, you know, all, all the different applications uh, that have, uh, have exploded across, across the universe. Uh, one area that, that's a, it's an interesting analogy is just, you know, all the activity associated with performance monitoring of individuals. And so uh, when we think about, you know, all the apps that we have on our smartphones, all the different uh, wearables that we have, Fitbit and things like this, uh, the interest in that, uh, you know, is actually, you know, a kind of a complete movement that, you know, is called the quantified self. And uh, what this types of technologies, these monitoring technologies that enable are individuals to gain insight into uh, to things that they, they might not have known about, about their own uh, individual performance uh, and, and uh, patterns. So whether you're talking about sleep patterns, 
uh, you know, heart rate, steps, et cetera. So we see, you know, this, uh, this you know, uh, massive activity related to learning about ourselves. Well, likewise, you know, at the same time, we have ongoing, uh, you know, this same type of activity to quantify business performance. So, uh, you know, both of these types of uh, applications and, and services, they, you know, they require, you know, the ability to get access to data and offer insights. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, the same type of activity happens when we think about business. Uh, and, you know, they, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, from a business perspective, it, it involves, you know, getting access to the data and, uh, you know, consolidating it, providing meaningful insights, and then getting that in the hands of executives. So there's kind of a parallel there. And again, once again today, we're talking about, of course, quantified business or uh, just how to, how to create an environment where decisions are more data-driven in a business. Yeah, th this is a great analogy, George, because I, I personally, myself, when I started using a fitness wearable, and my, my thoughts, my idea of my health, my performance, compared to what it was actual was not the same thing. So if people in business are making decisions based on gut and what they think versus what the data says, uh, I could see why that could be trouble. <laughs> yeah, and lots of times, yeah. I mean, you know, we, we see, you know, in terms of, well, in terms of personal, but also in terms of the business that, yeah, things are, things are determined somewhat on the instinct and intuition versus, uh, you know, and sometimes it's because of a lack of visibility into the uh, performance of a business. So uh, when we think about what are the things that are driving, uh, you know, the move towards greater analytics and greater visibility, of course, you know, businesses are being transformed across the globe in terms of, uh, you know, optimizing business operations, getting more visibility and insight into that, uh, improving the customer experience, and having a better understanding of what customers want, what the customer sentiment is, uh, we also see, you know, lots of uh, activity and interest in creating environments where there's more collaboration. And, and one thing for sure is that when we think about collaboration, it's very important for people to have in, in an organization to have a, a common share, a common view of the performance of the data. So when we think about analytics and uh, performance indicators, of course, a key attribute is the ability to you know, not only gain access to that data, but then to be able to share and work on it together. So uh, I want to share with you, you know, there was a study done, uh, there's been a bunch of studies done, there's a lot of information out there, but this was actually done by Harvard Business Review, and actually was comparing 2006 to 2016 on what was driving analytics, and, and, and back then it, it was very different. It was really, um, you know, initial capability, bringing information together. What we see in 2016, organizational culture, it's demanding this kind of information. And, and it's also uh, with the change in generations, especially with millennials, there's also a culture that says, I want to have it when I want it, where I want it, and that's where mold becomes a big part of that. Another thing that has evolved significantly is the ease of use with analytics. And this is, you know, it's not anymore, I've got to go to IT and, you know, a couple months later I get back, you know, some report or some screen. It, it gives me not only the capability to quickly have information at my fingertips, but for me myself to do more self-service, uh, for me to have the capability to do some drilling down and actually for a novice, someone without technical skills, to even potentially bring in other sources and engage. Uh, as a result of these technological improvements and this evolution, um, and all the discussion, and there's been a discussion for many years around big data and leveraging the information, the goal that's untapped within any company, mid-size, small, or large, uh, there is this huge um, adoption now. Um, there's an expectation in all companies of all sizes to be able to get that information. Um, external data now plays a big part. A lot of companies for years spend time in looking at their own information about their own customers, their own products. Now you combine that information with external data 
that helps you combine information that helps you correlate external factors with your own internal information, again, providing even that much more um, confidence in making decisions uh, regardless of what, what, what the application is. Clean data, this has always been an issue in the past, but now the evolution where you could really get um, consolidated, clean, accurate information. And we'll talk about this several times throughout the presentation. If you can't trust the data, then the whole thing kind of falls apart. And then getting the support you need, whether it's self-service support, where you can get help at, a, at your fingertip, or having people who are knowledgeable and help you. So all these things really have really catapulted um, the growth of analytics and, and the billions and billions of dollars that companies are spending to take advantage of it, the reason it's such a big market is because of the power and the results, the ROI they're getting by having that, that analytics, that, that information available uh, to you at different parts of your business. Uh, on the right, it just talks about the criticality of some of the types of um, deliverables like reporting and dashboards and self-service. So I thought this would be an interesting uh, slide to share with you guys in conjunction with what some of those drivers are and the, kind of the evolution to where we are today. Uh, so if you just take business goals now, um, uh, IDC did some research and the top two business reasons for analytics was improving customer relationships. And a lot of that has to do with knowing real time, you know, what's going on and having that information and whether you're improving that relationship because when you're engaging with a customer, you know exactly what's going on, or your customer has available to them exactly what the status is, whether it's orders or um, engagements. And the second thing, again, and you're going to hear this several times because it's a big deal, making the business more data-driven. So, and you'll hear us talk more, it's not just about the CEO, for those of you who are CEOs or business leaders, but throughout the company, we'll talk about that. Having a company that makes data-driven decisions has less risk and a higher chance of success. So a couple of more statistics. Now that we've talked about analytics, let's, let's talk about it in the mobile world. Uh, we've all talked about it. We've talked about it in several webinars that we've done at Empire about you know, the number of mobile devices and the demand based on generations that demand to use mobile devices and, and, and the complexities that come along with people who have their personal devices and they want to be able to use them or, or devices you might actually have that are part of a, corp a corporate asset. But Aberdeen um, uh, did a survey and the number one pressure for 71% of organizations has been the demand for mobile application access. Again, whether it's on their personal device or a corporate device. Aberdeen also went on to say that mobile business intelligence leaders are 72% more likely to have analytical data-driven culture. And if you have a data-driven culture, as I mentioned a moment ago, you've got everyone from the single individual contributor employee all the way up through senior management and executive teams making decisions based on data. Gartner also had um, a comment based on one of their BI uh, events they did in 2016, and they said that more than 33% of analytics will be consumed using mobile devices. I actually think this is a low number. For the largest companies, that number is more like 70, 75%. But across small, mid, and large companies, that's around 33%. So clearly, the demand for mobile BI continues to grow because of the benefits they bring to the table. And, and certainly, you know, when we think about the shift towards mobile, and Pete, Pete referenced, you know, uh, certainly in large companies, you know, the drive towards uh, mobile analytics and everything. But certainly in what we see in the work that we do, you know, this type of technology is available to, you know, small to medium-sized uh, companies as well. And we, we do a lot of that type of work. Yeah. So now the example you see up here, this is from actually the CEO of PetSmart. And um, this, is, this stuff's being done today. Uh, and we've been involved in multiple projects where it's p l it's performance-based. But here's an example where the CEO gets up in the morning, the first thing he does, he goes to his mobile app and he looks at the metrics. You know, how are we doing with transactions, conversion rates? How are different stores doing? 
having that information at that person's fingertips. Very powerful. This application for, for, for a CEO is just one example of the many applications for BI to help you make decisions throughout a company. All right, George, I'm going to pass this back to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so, yes, you know, when, when we combine these two things, mobile and, and in our analytics, you know, it, as Pete mentioned, you know, a very powerful combination. Users are looking for this type of access anytime, anywhere. Uh, they can see things in real time. Uh, you know, they're looking for, you know, ways to be able to make more timely and uh, effective decisions. Uh, and, and again, largely it's like instead of, you know, having discussions about opinions, you know, you begin to have discussions based upon data and facts. And uh, certainly mobile analytics enable that. Everyone's on the go. And, uh, you know, our work patterns have changed. You know, analytics need to be on the mobile for sure. Now, when we, when we step back for a moment and, and look at, you know, the current situation for, for many businesses, right, are that, you know, we've been talking about, you know, the kind of the end user end, uh, end of it here in terms of the client side and mobile apps and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, there's a, in the enterprise today, uh, some of the issues are and some of the, some of the challenges are that, you know, lots of the key uh, data, you know, is, you know, held in somewhat closed systems, is siloed. Uh, when data is extracted, it's extracted via spreadsheets. Many companies we see operate still, you know, in spreadsheets and, you know, kind of manually uh, mashing up and consolidating spreadsheets. Uh, if, if, you know, ad hoc reports are needed, you know, re requests need to be submitted to the quote-unquote IT organization, uh, and these uh, reports need to be uh, handcrafted. Uh, in all this environment, you know, version control is an issue. There's always the question, is, do I have the right spreadsheet? Is this the latest one or not? So, uh, you know, there's a lot of inefficiency when we think about the way reports and analytics are delivered and consumed today in the, in the businesses. And, of course, in this type of environment, you know, it's an environment of, of you know, columns and rows. The data is not presented visually many times. Lots of people, they, you know, respond, of course, much better to, to visual uh, perspective and, uh, you know, not much mobile going on. And uh, other, other aspects when we think about how we monitor the performance of a business, just the same way we monitor our own health is, you know, uh, there is not, you know, a lot of integration of alerts uh, when key, uh, you know, KPIs or key performance indicators change. That's what we see you know, in some businesses today, and that's, you know, what we oftentimes do is we work with them, and Tiger works with them, and we uh, begin to transform the way they generate and consume uh, analytics. So what we see from, uh, if, that's, if that's what the situation is in many companies, and, and oftentimes it's not, you know, everything is not that way, but certainly certain aspects of the business are that way, and there are opportunities to, to optimize it. But what we see from a user point of view, what data-driven users want, you know, that of course they want the analytics anywhere, anytime. They like to have uh, as much as possible direct access to the key data sources. They don't want to have to figure out things on their own necessarily, so prepackaged templates are important. Uh, you know, the ability for them to construct their own ad hoc reports. Oftentimes what we see from a, from a pattern is that, uh, you know, some uh, users will, you know, work with data and construct their own reports where it will be ad hoc, but eventually that becomes, you know, operationalized so that, you know, when somebody comes up with a, a view or a perspective that's new and different and offers insight, then that can be, become part of a much more of a mainstream uh, process and become part of the normal operation of performance monitoring. So people are, you know, folks are looking for that. Uh, when we get, uh, you know, of course we talked about the integrity of the data and responsiveness, very important. Uh, follow on uh, the ability to, you know, uh, view possible predictive paths and what if analysis is very important. And again, uh, you know, visual self-service is important, as Pete alluded to. And, uh, you know, then, you know, the interaction, particularly when we think about mobile in terms of alerts and notifications is important. 
Now, when we when we think about this, and when when we work with customers and deliver solutions, uh, we can introduce uh, our framework here that we call Empower BI. Uh, this is a, a framework that we've created that allows us, from the client side of the world, to you know quickly connect, uh, work with our back end solution so that we can begin to offer this type of capability to users. Again, our our solution is, is called Empower BI. We work with other vendors and, and customize other vendors' uh, product offerings as needed, and Piker does. But certainly in many cases, uh, you know, the, the frameworks that we use and we have developed uh, can, you know, quickly get uh, businesses up and running. So when we, when we take a look at, uh, say, you know, the types of capabilities in our, our framework, Empower BI, uh, you know, we have, you know, prepackaged templates. Uh, users can dra drag and drop and manage their own dashboards. Uh, you know, there are notifications when things change. And, uh, you know, the, the entire package allows users to communicate visually and share insights with each other. Just briefly, you know, walking through, you know, the types of functionality that, that we would expect to see out of any dashboard uh, environment. You know, of course, you know, some of the first uh, aspects of this are just access to reports, exist, uh, you know, uh, picking existing templates, and then selecting the data and being able to generate reports. And then, uh, you know, and, and along with the reports in terms of summaries, uh, to be able to drill down and take a look at you know, exactly what's driving some of the summaries that we see uh, is very important. So drill down is important in a dashboard. And then uh, you know, the dashboard itself, it needs to be flexible and allow users to uh, you know, build their own and personalize it, if you will, right, through drag and drop and uh, construct the type of uh, summaries and views that, that they want for their particular line of business. Uh, lastly, uh, something that's very important is, you know, just, you know, how we manage access to the data. You know, in any organization, you know, there's a hierarchy in terms of uh, organization, and there, you know, implicitly, there's, you know, uh, it's understood on what type of data uh, individuals can access. So, you know, the dashboard needs to support, you know, this type of authenticated access based upon a hierarchy. And so uh, certainly, certainly the, the framework that we have does that and allows you to share your dashboards and allows, you, allows the company to keep their data secure but be able to get it into the hands of the right people at the right time. So let, let me show you a couple of examples uh, that uh, we work we've done, and, and these have been built off of the framework. And uh, the framework that George just talked about um, we don't sell that separately. That, that framework, what that does is, as George said, helps us get our clients up and going quickly. The end result that you would get as a client is a custom business intelligence uh, solution. Whether it's, uh, here's an example of a healthcare practice where, uh, whether it's on a tablet, and again, depending on um, what real estate's available, we change up how we show and what information we show. This just shows an example of a healthcare practice that wanted to monitor real time across uh, multiple um, uh, offices, payment, you know, patient visits, uh, appointments, future appointments, um, look at it over a period of time. As you can see here, you've got a tablet view and there's a certain amount of stuff you can get on the tablet, but then there's a view that's that is taking the most important information that can be leveraged on, on say, a smartphone and represented there. Uh, another example that we built off of the this framework that George talked about, here's an example of a profit and loss uh, example. Now, this happens to be showing a restaurant. This is actually part of a bigger project that included uh, franchises and multiple restaurants. So. Um, depending on your decision authority or your need for information, um, as George mentioned also when he talked about hierarchy, um, if you were in charge of 100 restaurants, your visibility 
into that information, the sales, cost goods sold, expenses uh, overall, as compared which ones were doing better, which ones were doing worse, then you could break that now. And if there's a person responsible for just the restaurants in a certain city, what they had access to, right down to an individual restaurant. And again, showing you different uh, elements that would be represented based on whether it's a tablet or, or, or a smartphone. You can see here, there's two different representations of information uh, on a smartphone. And uh, all of this, by the way, and this is what was really important, that, that you know, it, it's having that information available, but having it available to where it can be leveraged based on uh, what works the best. And the information that's provided, that's something we work directly with you on, and, and we can actually talk about process in a moment. But I just want, just want to quickly show you a couple of examples. Now, so Pete is talking a little bit about the front end there in terms of the presentation to users and how users interact with the system. Uh, the, the other piece of this, which is important, of course, is the back end and uh, how we gain access to the data, how we, uh, you know, extract it, analyze it, transform it, and make, make these types of reports available to the users. So when we look at this very high level architectural drawing, you know, again, we see, you know, variety of data sources, whether it's, you know, anything from a spreadsheet to, uh, you know, an HR system, a finance system, a CRM, or as Pete talked, to, Pete, Pete talked about earlier, external systems and, uh, you know, little things like, you know, access to, you know, the weather and things like that. It's remarkable how much the weather affects different businesses and things in terms of store sales or, or anything. So, uh, you know, access to external data sources is very important as well. So, you know, one thing that is certainly a, a core strength of in Piger is, you know, to establish these connectors to, to the data sources that are required. Uh, we establish the connectors, we create, you know, the storage and analytic uh, environment, and uh, the other component here that, that's illustrated in the drawing, you know, is, uh, you know, this data, the entire process may be cloud-based, but if it's not, oftentimes, you know, we host some of this on the cloud, if there's, you know, extensive uh, bursty type of uh, requirements for CPU utilization or for storage, uh, you know, the, the elastic nature of the cloud is very important. So uh, lots of times these applications are stored in the cloud, are, are run in the cloud, and, uh, you know, the, the client applications, the end user application uh, accesses that, uh, that, that cloud functionality. That's just a high level view of, uh, you know, architecturally what we're talking about here, but it's not all just about the front end. And uh, we have a great deal of experience, you know, establishing these connectors, their, you know, web service APIs to different systems. And, uh, you know, even if someone has a Excel, Excel spreadsheets and things like that, offering a mechanism for them to, uh, to upload and synchronize the data, uh, we, we do all that. So, so we've talked uh, quite a bit about, uh, you know, why uh, analytics is blowing up and, and, and why it's something that, uh, uh, well, the reason you, you're on, on this uh, webinar, and we talked about current status and we talked about where things were going. One thing that's really important, and, and that's why you shouldn't underestimate the back-end uh, work that George has talked about, and that is confidence is required. Just to throw a couple of more stats out there real quickly, 82% of business leaders surveyed identified improving the quality of decisions as a primary benefit of BI. That's not rocket science. I think most of you on the call here today would agree that that's probably one of the main reasons you're, you're investigating this. However, that same group, 83% of them were equally concerned about the quality of the information they obtain from BI solutions. So, Bottom line is, if you don't have confidence in the data and the information you're getting, as I mentioned a few moments ago, all bets are off. So this is a very important part of the overall solution set. So, you know, 
following on that in terms of you know some of the top challenges that uh, businesses uh, may encounter when in implementing uh, analytics and analytics platforms and business intelligence uh, as Pete is talking about you know getting access to the right data is very important uh, and uh, you know opening up some of those systems and allowing them to work together right to, to uh, interact in ways that that might not necessarily happen out of the box with some of the some of the systems we see. Uh, so, you know, getting access to the right data for the analytics, uh, and again, assuring that it's timely and it's accurate. You know, providing ways that that users can see, you know, when you know when something was updated and what the what the age of a, a age of a particular snapshot is, right? So, uh, and then lastly, you know, some of the top challenges is just how you gain insights from the data and how you, how you use that within the organization. Of course, sharing the data is very important as, uh, along those lines as well. But it's, it's very important when, when, as we go through the process here in a little bit, you know, it's, it's easy to, you know, imagine, you know, all kinds of obscure insights that you might gain from the data, but definitely from our point of view, it's important to start with some of the critical uh, performance indicators in a company and create an environment where the right people can gain access to that in a timely manner. So we've talked about, uh, you know, the condition, you know, the drivers for analytics, uh, the demand for analytics, kind of a situational analysis, and uh, what users want. We looked at some screens and things. Now we're going to talk a little bit about okay how how do we how do how does a business get there and of course uh, in Piger we we do this quite a lot with many different uh, size companies we've done it for a dozen years and we you know we have certainly it's important to have kind of a proven process we're going to kind of walk through like how to get there we are you know it, sometimes it, it can sound like a lot of activity but. Uh, you know, we, we have done this a lot and we, we can guide uh, customers at every step of the way. So we're going to talk about, you know, building an analytics strategy and how to bring, you know, analytics to, uh, to the executives, uh, you know, uh, without, uh, you know, efficiently and, and how, how to get there without getting lost in the process. So when we think about analytics, uh, basically, you know, kind of a five-step process there in terms of developing applications and creating this environment to, to provide access. Uh, most important, I think, you know, at the beginning, of course, is to just make sure that we know what the, what the critical goals are, what the key functions and uh, key challenges the company has. Because if the company has key challenges, that tells us that those are the things they need to have visibility to and be able to monitor and make adjustments. So when we talk about analytics, we're, you know, it's definitely important to identify the skills and plans. Uh, when we embark upon a project, we have to identify the key stakeholders, the uh, people who are involved in the various lines of business. Uh, when we start thinking about how we deliver this information to the users and things, of course, we have to have a good sense of the users and the usage, the types of devices they they have, they will, you know, this, this information will be delivered on. And uh, lastly, uh, you know, it's important as you go through this process of implementation, you know, to, to be aware of the technology and the tools and the processes that, that's involved. So we're going we're gonna to kind of walk through a little bit of the types of things that need to be done for each one of these steps. The, uh, again, the first step I talked about just a moment ago in terms of business goals and objectives, uh, and making sure that your an analytics plans align with those goals. And, uh, you know, there's some examples identified there in terms of profit and loss, shorter sales cycles, uh, controlling your operational costs, all of these things, what, what the various things that a business wants to improve upon, whether it's customer service, better customer service, we need to have uh, ways of monitoring this performance, and those translate into analytics plans and the areas that would be focused on. So when we when we think about uh, you know P and L, well then th that turns around. We need to think about connectors to the P and L uh, systems and data in a particular enterprise. When we think about uh, 
you know, better customer service, that translates to how do we, you know, we need to have uh, access to CRM systems and other indicators for how we're delivering uh, excellent customer service. So the analytics plans will, you know, align directly with, uh, with the business goals. Uh, when we think about a process and a project, of course, one of the key things as we identify the goals and objectives and the vision uh, are to identify the stakeholders, uh, the various people that, uh, that own uh, the particular domain, the functional leaders and line of business owners. Uh, IT, oftentimes, you know, they're a facilitator. They participate, not necessarily the owner, because we're trying to deliver this, this information to the business leaders. And when we think about, you know, the applications and specifically kind of the use cases and scenarios, uh, of course, analytics, oftentimes we haven't touched upon it much, but it, it can also, you know, it's definitely used uh, in a B2B environment to and be able to monitor performance across from vendors to, to other businesses and uh, to measure the performance. So uh, oftentimes, you know, some of the, some, that can be a use case scenario and user scenario that's very important to a specific company. Uh, of course, across the board, like any other types of application, uh, we need to think about, you know, user expectations and user behavior. When we think about BI and uh, what what users expect, of course they live in a mobile world. It's it's uh, you know very short uh, uh, life cycle for a for a application or a function that doesn't do what the user expects or is slow or confusing. So standard usability applies when we think about. Uh, uh, when we think about uh, analytics and business intelligence, we need to be able to uh, provide the utilities that users want and get out of the way so that they don't really have to think about the application. In fact, when we think about analytics, oftentimes it needs to be integrated into the application, so it's just another set of functionality in, say, an enterprise application. But uh, it's very important, all the standard usability is very important. It needs to be customizable and personalized, uh, and of course, you know, users expect these things to be available on, you know, three to four screens. Uh, and lastly, key point in terms of what expectations are is to be able to share the insights and share the dashboards and share the data and collaborate. So, you know, the first three parts of the process, in my opinion, are probably the most important. Uh, the, the devices and technologies, which we're about to talk about now, it, to me, if you do the first three steps well, if you really understand what your business objectives are, who your stakeholders are, who's using it, what kind of usage, if you get that right, the rest of this stuff kind of flows. Uh, when it comes to identifying uh, the device or devices for business intelligence, you know, there is the, the common questions that you would have for any type of application, depending on is it an internal application, is it external, is it customer facing or um, uh, partner facing? Uh, is there um, the usage of bring your own device or are you gonna lock down the kinds of devices? So you gotta make that decision. Uh, but then in addition to those typical decisions, I mean, there's certain functionality and, 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 and interactions with mobile devices that you don't have with the web and even some potential limitations. Um, you know, off of a desktop or a laptop. But then in addition to that, you've got to look at considering the suitability for the analytics application, the information you're looking to leverage. So as an example, you know, here, this is another project we, we did where um, it, it, it's showing you information off of a web environment on a tablet and again, on a smartphone. Now, Depending on the application, if budget allows, having the independence of device to where you can get to this information anytime, any place, and also depending on what part of that information you want, that could be dictated uh, by the device, where clearly there's real estate issues on a smartphone, but then there's capabilities with alerting, push notifications, 
whether it's tablet or smartphones, the freedom to be anywhere, uh, the capability to leverage location services on where you are. So again, if you've done your homework on what is your business objective, who, who is the stakeholder that's counting on achieving that business goal, and then who's going to be using it, what kind of usage, you do that well, this becomes very straightforward. Then the next step, and I'll pass this back to George, is finally to the point, okay, now let's build something. Yes, and so, you know, just as, as Pete talked about, you know, if we've done this upfront planning and everything, this step is likely to become be pretty clear, but certainly decisions need to be made when, when you're embarking upon, uh, you know, uh, augmenting an app or, or uh, creating a new app. And when, when we think about that, decisions need to be made in terms of whether the applications will be native, uh, you know, in iOS or in Android, whether it would be hybrid, hybrid where, you know, you know, be kind of the native app with, with wrap, wrapped around, you know, web, web data. Certainly when we look at analytics, it can lend itself to that. But, uh, you know, at a high level, decisions need to be made in terms of, uh, you know, what's the most cost-effective uh, approach uh, to get started with analytics, and, uh, you know, what's the, you know, what's the most optimal thing for the particular uh, initiative. But, this, you know, native app, you know, uh, is one, one aspect, uh, and then, of course, it could be done, you know, purely from a mobile web environment, mobile site, site as well. But usually when we walk through the entire process, it's pretty obvious by this time which way a company wants to go. Now, um, when we think about this process in general and about, you know, uh, about uh, analytics and embarking upon analytics, uh, an important aspect to, to, uh, to think about is that, you know, when you begin to identify the types of data you want to expose to your users, the types of analytics, the types of reports, the features and functionality, the list can grow pretty long. And uh, what's important, though, is to really look at all that and prioritize and align those priorities with the objectives of the business, what's key to the business today, right? And, and distill down the initial functionality into what you know the industry calls and what we call the MVP or minimum viable product. So when we think about analytics, we need to think about what are those key performance indicators and those key reports. What's the first thing we need to do to get the, this type of data out into the hands of the executives? So and that's not not to say that there won't be follow-on work. There will be a roadmap, and there will be uh, also you know the other key to getting an MVP out the door is that we begin immediately to get use back, uh, user feedback from the, from the users, and you know, they are going to be your sources of innovation oftentimes. I wish I could do this. Is there a way for this to happen, right? So you know, we need to get, get the MVP out the door and begin to get the feedback from the users. And that, that's certainly an important piece of the overall uh, implementation of analytics. Now, when we think about, you know, we've been talking about, you know, uh, analytics and ways to allow, uh, you know, to enable executives to make better decisions. But, and when we think about roadmaps and things after, after we get something out the door, ultimately, you know, all employees in, in an enterprise are decision makers. Now, they may need different types of data. You know, an executive may need strategic data in terms of overall performance and profit and loss, uh, and this sort of thing. But all employees are decision maker, and as, as the platform evolves, we begin to get key performance indicators in the hands of all the decision makers, which are, is all the employees. So, uh, you know, uh, some employees that do the heavy lifting every day, they may need much more tactical information about performance. But uh, ultimately, this will drive optimization and efficiency throughout the company. So we, we see that as very important. And, you know, important is helping to establish common goals across the, across, across the enterprise. All right. Well, so time check. I think uh, we're going to have a little bit of time for questions here in a moment. Let me just kind of summarize. Uh, again, we talked a lot about why. 
uh, you know, probably why you're on this call and why it's important and what the value is. Uh, I believe that following a process to develop your analytics strategy guarantees you the highest chance for success and getting the maximum value that you um, were looking for in the first place. Again, identifying the business goals and plans, uh, regardless of what the specific capital, whether it's P&L, performance base, um, inventory, uh, you know, accounting performance, et cetera, have a plan. And make sure that, that you know who all the stakeholders are, understand who the users are, the usage, how they're going to take advantage, how they're going to use, what environment are they going to use it in, the importance of real time versus near real time, all of these things um, as you go through and build out an, an analytics tool. It, this, this is blowing up, and there's really no reason, regardless of size company, for people not to be making data-driven decisions. And, and there's very little reason not to do it across multiple um, manifestations of that information, whether it be web-based all the way through on a smartphone, and quite frankly, being um, uh, you know, alerted on your smartwatch when a threshold has been exceeded or dropped below based on sales or inventory, et cetera. All that is very doable, it's very straightforward, as long as you understand what is it you're trying to accomplish. Yes, and, and we've talked about this process and uh, talked about all the, all the aspects and the things that need to be considered. It's just important to reiterate that we, we do this many times uh, on hundreds of different applications and things, and Empire, you know, is capable of guiding, uh, you know, any size company through this process. So I have a couple of last slides that kind of talk about Empire, but before I do that, I, we do have a handful of questions I want to go through. Uh, George, I'm going to pass the first one to you. This question is, if all I have is spreadsheets, um, can I still build a mobile BI dashboard? Uh, so I guess it's, they don't need back-end systems, and yeah. I've got these spreadsheets. Can I still build a dashboard? De definitely, and we, we work with different companies and have, and have done that. Uh, it, it kind of eliminates a lot of the, uh, some of the version control issues and the way information is distributed. But basically, yes, our platform, our framework has a, has a means to allow, uh, you know, authorized users to import uh, import spreadsheets, uh, you know, on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. And uh, our our platform, you know, can consolidate and mash up that data, and uh, you know, offer up reports and allow users to create reports. So yes, the the answer is definitely uh, we've done exactly that for several customers. Okay, another one is. Roughly, how long does it take to build a mobile, say, P&L dashboard? Well, yeah, and that, that can vary depending upon the sources of data and, uh, you know, the means to get to all those connectors I talked about and things like that. But it, it's, you know, not, not very, not, you know, it's measured in weeks, uh, you know, some number of, you know, uh, 12 to 14, you know, anywhere from 8 to 14 weeks depending upon the level of effort. It's not a... It's not a big effort, and the other, you know, message is that, you know, this type of technology, this type of capability is not just for the big guys anymore. It's, you know, this type of stuff, the frameworks that we have allow us to get this, you know, into your users' hands quickly, and it's not a, a big, massive, extensive effort now. All right. Uh, next question is, how do you decide whether to go to the web? Uh, web solution or mobile solution, I'll answer that, and, and you know, we kind of talked about it. I mean, especially, I'm, I'm guessing part of that question might be around, well, there's, you know, mobile-friendly or mobile-responsive websites. Uh, why wouldn't I just do that? Well, whether you do web or, or mobile it really has to do with what you're trying to accomplish, and there is capabilities on a mobile phone. We talked about alerting location services. Um, there's interactive capabilities uh, on mobile phones, smartphones, you just don't have in the web. The other thing is um, user experience and, and usability and a, a person's comfort level in leveraging that. So it, it really is, an, uh, it, again, I hate to keep saying this, but kind of goes back to what do you want to accomplish. And if what you're doing is presenting information, um, you know, status information, and, and it's pretty static and, 
Um, you're not looking to alert someone when there's a change in, in, in a performance or, or in, in, in a metric, then, you know, a mobile web could be a good fit because you could you leverage that across. So it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. And there's things you can take advantage of for sure. In addition to user experience, there's functionality on mobile that you just don't have uh, on the web. Last, uh, let me see, got one more question. How long does it take to build? No, we just talked about that, sorry. Um, where's the other, oh, here it is. Is cloud required to build a mobile BI solution? And uh, I'll take that, Kate. You, no, cloud is not required depending upon, the, you know, the, the, uh, the existing infrastructure. Uh, you know, if, if you have a large scale uh, uh, enterprise, uh, off, you know, the types of elastic storage and uh, uh, flexibility in terms of uh, CPU and things, uh, you know, it lends itself, cloud lends itself to that, but it's not required. Uh, the types of uh, ex executables and applications that, that we need to provide this type of, of BI uh, can be done on-prem, in the cloud, or a hybrid of the two. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to just add one thing to that, though. Uh, in, in, the, in the work that we've done and what we're seeing, um, the growth of cloud and as a company, if you're thinking of moving some of your work to the cloud and if you use outside services for your IT, one of the number one applications that is driving cloud adoption is analytics. And especially the combination with moving information, consolidating information, mashing it up, on the cloud and then making that information available uh, through mobile continues to grow. So that, that is one of the largest, uh, one of the biggest reasons uh, from an application perspective that people are engaging in cloud. But absolutely, just like the original question on spreadsheets, it's obviously not required. Well, look, uh, I think we're done. I, I, I don't want to take much more of your time. Uh, before I do go, I just want to, um, and by the way, everyone uh, will get um, these slides. You'll get a, uh, um, a link to the recording if you want to go back through any of this information. But uh, if you don't know much about Empire, we've been around uh, uh, over a decade. Uh, we've done lots of work uh, from enterprises to startups to mid-sized companies. So you know, mid-sized is probably our sweet spot, but we've done everything in helping companies take ideas and making them reality. Uh, to working with some of the Fortune 50 companies. So uh, lots of experience on, on mobile app development, web. Uh, we are a gold certified Microsoft partner. Uh, we do a lot of work in the cloud, whether it be Amazon, uh, Microsoft Azure, Rackspace, et cetera. Uh, what we bring to the table um, as a uh, custom software developer and IT service provider is everything from concept, consulting, and strategy through UI, design, development, production, and support, testing. So we are a, a full service end-to-end -end provider of services specializing in mobile and cloud. So uh, if you are looking at engaging in, in any type of application, but specifically what we talked about today on analytics, uh, we encourage you uh, to reach out to us. We'd love to spend some time with you and just even chatting with you. We spend a lot of time talking about helping you understand or helping you realize how much what you want to do makes sense. Is there an ROI in there? Before we even talk about uh, the idea of um, technology or, or building anything. And then the last thing I'll leave you with and we're done is we do have two more webinars uh, in this series in two weeks. We're going to be focusing on customer engagement, customer-facing mobile applications. I'm happy to announce that one of our customers, uh, Fresh Benny's, will be joining us, and they're going to take us through their process of building their customer engagement strategy and then showing and, and talking a little bit about their application. Uh, and then two weeks after that, we'll be doing a similar webinar, but this is from an internal perspective, whether it's intranets or um, automating workflows to benefit productivity within the company. Anyway, George, thank you so much for spending your time. 
Uh, and thank you for your questions for those who are on the webinar. Uh, please don't hesitate after the fact to ask any questions. And we hope to see you shortly in our webinar in two weeks. Thank you all. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.